God, nevertheless, uh, as we already said, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And we uh, thank God for uh, those that are here on today, this 4th of July, this Independence Day. We certainly praise God for your sacrifice that you made in his name, coming out to worship him, as the scripture says, in spirit and in truth. So we certainly praise God for all of his goodness and his mercy that he has shown toward us because he's good and his mercy endureth forever. Amen. And uh, we certainly do want to honor our First Lady, Lady Tracy Payne. Thanks to her, amen, all of our ministers and elders. We thank God for each and one, every one of our members that are here on today, our ushers and our media team. Amen. We certainly do want to remember the Cooley family. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And the Lord uh, continue to bless and to heal and to deliver. Amen. Amen. Mom, she often came here to work with not here, but we were on that whole thirty first street. Came in on fire to worship the Lord. Amen. And was and was ready to, to serve, ready to do whatever was necessary. So we certainly praise God. Praise God for you as well. Um, are there any, any arrangements as of yet? Or is it still working on? Wednesday. Wednesday? Yeah. At 4 o'clock? At 4 o'clock? Yeah. Oh, all right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 12th, 12th and Ash. Yeah. Well, uh, Wallace, I think it was. Yeah, 12th and Wallace. Yeah, it's 4 o'clock Wednesday. So yes, so let us go and support and um, be a support uh, for our brother and for the family. Amen. 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 Normally, you know, Wednesdays we have our Bible study, but we'll suspend that so we can uh, go and be a support uh, unto you and to the family. Amen. May God feel our own. So um, we certainly praise God and give God glory and honor. Thank him for all that he's doing and all that he has done. Amen. So right now, we certainly do want to go before the Lord in prayer. Um, if there's a particular prayer request, um, you can let it be known at this particular time. All right. Well, we want to pray for the success of the service on today. And we want to pray for um, those that are traveling. I know the Daniels are traveling. Um, anybody else that's traveling that you know of? Oh, oh I'm sorry. What, you had your hand up? Yeah, I'm traveling on Tuesday. Oh, amen. Even on Tuesday. You traveling, you traveling, traveling shoes. Amen. Uh, and we certainly praise God. We praise God. We got the bus family coming on here.
Let's start with verse 18. What prophecy is the graven image that the maker thereof has graven it? The multi image and the teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusted therein to make dumb idols. Woe unto him that says to the wood, Awake to the dumb stone. Arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Let us read verse 20 all together. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. May the Lord bless you to the reading of his word.
Um, we have on next week uh, coming up uh, a unity revival. Amen. Hosted here at um, Christian Ministries. Um, and it's at 4 p.m. And the speaker will be all the way from um, Youngstown, Ohio. Lord, help my mind. Youngstown, Ohio, Bishop Robert Brady Moore. Amen. He'll be bringing uh, two other churches here uh, looking to have a high time in the Lord. Uh, 4 p.m. So come on out. Amen. And receive your revival. We also want to welcome all of our visitors and all of our guests that are here with us here on today. Amen. Come on, give God a praise. Our, our 
our Duke Direct High Rises Daycare Center. Amen. We're still looking for children. We got enough teachers, uh, but we're looking for children. Amen. So pray. Uh, uh, pass the word out. If you need a card, I got a card. Uh, pass the word out that we're opening our daycare center. And that way uh, we can help mold and shape new minds uh, for uh, the kingdom of God. So let us let us come together and let us pray for our daycare. And if you have time, you can walk around the corner and uh, of the building and uh, see the daycare uh, unit. Also, too, uh, we're looking to uh, have our inspector here. He's coming on Tuesday. And uh, I want him to do something special for us. So uh, let us pray that the Lord will touch his mind. Amen. God, God controls the minds and the hearts of the people. Amen. So pray that the Lord will touch his mind so that he can be in our favor. Amen. Hallelujah. So we pray. All right. So uh, we thank God for the vision of this church, Christian Ministries, and the Apostolic Faith Church, uh, where we are caring church. Leading souls to Christ, strengthening members and families, amen, making disciples, equipping them for service and community ministry. And we thank God for our purpose. Our purpose of this church is to promote the gospel, amen, to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ, an effective, responsible ministry, an intentional, dynamic, uh, creative fellowship. And we praise God for our values. We value love. We value faithfulness, commitment sacrifice and service and we value one another. Amen. So we thank God for you and we praise God for you. For our final announcement, we have a graduate celebration. Amen. Sister Cora's son uh, is graduating. Amen. Amen. He has, well, he has graduated. We put it that way. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. And the graduation celebration will be July 10th. Uh, here at Christian Ministries from 1 to 4 and she sent this uh, invitation to each and every one of us that are here uh, Brother J Javon Martin uh, graduated from Northwestern Pennsylvania Collegiate Academy Amen So thank you for the praise Thank you Lord and you're welcome uh, to come as on uh, this Saturday from 1 to 4 in our banquet hall. Amen. Amen. All minds clear? Thank you, Jesus. And we praise God for you. We want to uh, ask the church to stand. It's, it's blessing time. It's blessing time. Thank you, Lord. It's good to give unto the Lord. The Bible says, give. Amen. And it shall be given back to you. Press down, shake it together, and run it over. Amen. For the Lord. Uh, cause others to give into your bosom. And the Lord says that he loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And give your tithes and your offering uh, as unto the Lord. We also have another means of giving and that through Tithely. Amen. You would find the app Tithely, download Christian Ministries and proceed to give in that way. Amen. So we want to go before the Lord in prayer as we get ready to give to sow seed and into the kingdom. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to give and to sow seed into the kingdom. We praise and magnify your holy name. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every servant of God that is about to sow seed into the kingdom. Uh, bless them 30, 60, and 100 fold. Father, we thank you. We praise you. Give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now we turn you further over to the hands of our ushers. Blessed, 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 blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. Thank you. Blessed in we come and when we go we cast down every stronghold. Amen. We certainly do thank God for you. 
were given and they were, they were given. Thank you, Jesus. I was just informed uh, that a sister Tanika's birthday on tomorrow. Amen. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Thank you, Jesus. I think she found the found in you too. Amen. We praise God. We praise God. It's good to wrap them up at birthdays. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Take care of your body. Do some exercise. Move around. Amen. Eat right. Amen. Amen. I want to get some exercise tips. See, uh, Brother McKay, I'm going to tell you. Amen. You can come down. You do a video on YouTube. On uh, YouTube. You do a video all the time. <laughs> I'll be watching. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. It's good, isn't it? It's good. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. And I know y'all got some grilling to do, some barbecuing to do. Amen. We won't keep it long on today. Uh, but we do have a word uh, from the Lord. And it's good uh, for us to get into God's word. And we thank God uh, for your sacrifice. Amen. For your sacrifice. And we just want you to stand with us uh, just for a brief moment as we go into the word of the Lord on today. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, and I want you to go with me uh, to St. John, St. John chapter number 8, St. John chapter number 8. Amen. I feel like a, I feel like a rush. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And that's when y'all should have said, take your time. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. That ain't going to be too long. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, St. John, chapter number 8. And I uh, want to look at verse number uh, 30. Drop it down all the way to verse number 30. And it says, As he spake these words, Many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Yes. They answered him, uh, We be Abraham's seed, we were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to preach your word on today. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing that is here in this place. Anoint our ears, anoint our mouth, and anoint these, thy great people. Father, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And I just want to take for a thought on today uh, from those verses, uh, verse 32, that verse 32, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And as uh, you are here today on uh, Independence Day, and during Independence Day, the, the 1776, uh, the, the, as we call it, the Founding Fathers, they made a declaration, a declaration that they were going to be free from Britain, free from Great Britain and their rule. So they colonized on this day, on that particular year, to colonize, to come together to declare their freedom. Liberty. And that's the subject I want to preach on today. There is liberty in Jesus. There is liberty in Jesus. And in this particular chapter, uh, if you were to read from its very beginning, you would see that uh, Jesus was being entrapped by the Pharisees and the scribes. They brought a woman to him that was caught in the very act of adultery so that he, they would see what he would do so that they would have occasion to accuse him. One of the problems was that if he 
lean toward uh, what the law of Moses said, then because that was an unpopular command and not a lot of people were adhering to it, then he would lose his uh, 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 motivation as far as his, his gain, as far as his influence with the people. And also, too, they knew that the Roman soldiers had outlawed stoning. That was the penalty for somebody that was caught in adultery. So they, they was trying to put Jesus in a rock in a hard place. But Jesus, the Bible said, stood down and they began to write uh, something on the ground. And they began to inquire of him even the further about what you should do and Jesus, he rose up and said, He that without sin, let him cast the first stone. And there we know the rest of that story, that, that, that Jesus stooped back down and he begins to write. And, and the people speculate what he wrote on the ground. But, you know, whatever he wrote on the ground convicted their heart. It convicted their heart and they started to leave one by one, one by one one out of the presence of the Lord. And the Bible says that they all left and it left Jesus and the woman alone. And Jesus asked the woman, where are, woman, where are thou accusers? Are there anybody here that accuses thee? And she said, no Lord. And Jesus said that, that, that I, I, I don't accuse you. I don't accuse you. And notice what he said. He told her to go your way and sin no more. And what Jesus was doing, he was, he was freeing her up from her sins so that she would hopefully live a life of righteousness. So that she would move forward and live a life of righteousness. And then Jesus he made a declaration and told them that he was the light. He was literally the light of the world. And those that believe in me should not walk in darkness, but in light. And Jesus made that proclamation to that group that were there. And as they begin to go back and forth about him being like Jesus, then begins to open up their mind and understanding that, that Jesus is that light that came to lighten every man that cometh into the world to, to give them a great knowledge of what freedom really looks like, what righteousness really looks like because without Jesus they don't have righteousness. Without Jesus you don't have sanctification and holiness because the Bible says that all have sinned that come short of the glory of God. But Jesus, he told him, he said, I didn't come to condemn, but I came to save. I, I came to bring the light or the knowledge of salvation. Uh, the Bible tells us in the prophecies that, that people sat in darkness and they would see a great light. And, and that great light would be Jesus. But, uh, people have all their lifetimes set in darkness, but but the Bible tells us that arise and shine for that light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Jesus, he was declaring that he is that light. He, he is that light, that light of every man that gives people wisdom and knowledge about salvation. To give people wisdom and knowledge about deliverance. Because, beloved, you have to understand that darkness brings about a way of evil, brings about a way of depression and oppression. But, but Jesus is anointed. He is anointed to deliver. He's anointed to set the captive free. He's uh, anointed to give light to everybody, everybody that comes into the world. And, and when you really think about it, it doesn't matter about your intellectual ability. You can understand Jesus. You can understand the Lord. You know, you can be a scholar and understand Jesus and you can have a fifth grade under education and understand the need for Jesus because Jesus makes it plain and the Holy Ghost makes it plain where a fool can error. You realize that we're all born in sin and, and the way out of sin is through Jesus. He's the one that died on the cross. He's the one that gave his life as a ransom for you 
and I. And, and, and as we see here, Jesus was making these declarations and it really confounded them because they didn't really want to receive what Jesus was saying. They, they didn't really accept that he was talking about he is the Messiah, that he is the one that is, was, was sent by the Father to deliver them. And, and Jesus was on it. He said, if you don't believe me, you will die in your sins. If you don't trust that the Father sent me, you won't die in your sins. If, if we don't believe that Jesus rose and, and Jesus died, and, and he got up on that third day, and he, hallelujah, he died on the cross for our sins, and if we don't put our trust and our hope in him, we'll all die in our sins. We'll all die in our sins because he's the only Lamb of God that was slain for the foundation of the world. He's the one. He, he's the one that gave his life as a ransom for you and I. And it behooves us to believe on him. It, it behooves us to trust in him. If you're waiting on another bus, if you're waiting on another savior, if you're waiting on another deliverer, oh my God, you might as well, your wait is in vain because Jesus already I 
our Savior. And Jesus, he begins to tell that God, these individuals that were there in our text, he begins to tell them about his mission. He begins to tell them about him being the light. Oh, and there was some opposition to what Jesus was saying. But the Bible tells us that there were some that were there that believed. My God, not everybody is going to be a fool. You see, not everybody is going to be crazy. crazy. Hallelujah. But Jesus was talking. You see, you got some that believe and then you got some that don't believe. But those that believe Jesus took them to some progressive steps, to progressive steps of freedom. My God, when you believe there's some progressive steps that you need to walk through to benefit from Jesus Christ. Uh, the first step is to believe, to believe what Jesus has said, to believe that he is the Lord, that, that he is the Christ. And Jesus is telling them, since you believe, they put their faith in Jesus. Oh, when you trust in the Lord, that means you're putting your faith in Jesus. You've got to put your confidence in him. You know, we're not uh, 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 people, uh, oh God, helping the preacher to here. You see, Jesus, the Bible tells us, don't be double-minded. You know, you can't have faith in Buddha and then have faith in Jesus. You can't have faith in Confucius and have faith in Jesus. You've got to have faith and confidence in Jesus alone. You've got to trust in him alone. You've got to have confidence in him alone. You can't have confidence in man, but you've got to have confidence in Jesus. And you've got to have faith in him according to the scriptures. In other words, you've got to know what the word says.
to trust in Jesus, he's able to take you a little further. And that's the progression of salvation. That's the progression of freedom. When you believe and start to believe on Jesus, certain things start to happen. Oh God, the great matter starts to increase. My God, the knowledge of him, it starts to explode. Oh, and you begin to ask questions just like a little child. Oh, when you start to ask questions, the Lord is able to feed your mind. Yeah. <laughs> 
ransom today. Free my oppression. 